ABC 10 News at 7 starts now. The waiting game continues tonight as votes slowly come in that will determine our next president. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt and I'm Steve Atkinson. Joe Biden appears poised to win the presidency, but things are still too close to call to officially call it this hour. Our Adam Rakuzin is in the live center to break it all down. Adam, we continue to have patience. Yeah, and those votes are coming in and they are being counted. We've got two major updates just in the past hour from two of the four battleground states that we're following right now. The first one I want to start on the East Coast is Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has been growing a lead for Joe Biden throughout the day. Just in the past three hours since we last talked, Biden's lead increasing now to about 27,000 votes. That's with 96% of the vote coming in. Just a couple hours ago, Biden was only up by about 14,000. So you can see almost doubling in that right now. Let's swing down to Georgia. Georgia is probably the closest of the four states that we're watching right now. Biden still holding on to about a 4,000 vote lead in Georgia. Most of the counting there wrapped up. They're looking at things like provisional ballots, uh, some of the military ballots that were coming in. We're 99% of the vote in in Georgia right now. So let's swing over to the West Coast, Nevada. Nevada's kind of stayed the same for most of the day. Biden's still holding on to about a 22,000 vote lead in Nevada. That's with 93% of the vote reporting. We might get some results from Nevada later on this evening. And this is where the president has been making up ground. This is the other update that we got. Maricopa County in Arizona just put up some new ballots. And the president's down, uh, president is starting to increase right there and catch Joe Biden a little bit. Now only down about uh, 29,000 votes. He picked up about 10,000 votes really relatively quickly. So the president is focusing a lot on Arizona. Here's why. If Joe Biden can, it, Joe Biden is leading in most of these states right now. The president, if he picks up Arizona, still needs to pick up a couple other of these states, but he can't afford to lose Arizona. That's where he's catching up. Joe Biden right now is looking for a win in Pennsylvania. Joe Biden at 253. If Biden picks up Pennsylvania, Biden wins everything right now. But right now, Biden is also leading in Arizona and Nevada. So you can see the map. You can see where they're focusing on things. You can see where the president needs to focus on things for this path to re-election, if that were to happen. But still, a lot of votes out there, a lot of votes left to be counted. This is not over by any means. But the president's path to re-election, just as the numbers coming in, getting much more difficult. We'll continue to follow these through the night, guys. All right, we'll check back in with you. Thank you, Adam Rakusen, live in the 10 News Live Center. It is not clear yet if Joe Biden will speak tonight. Media outlets are reporting that he and Kamala Harris are ready to address the nation outdoors if major networks were to declare him a winner tonight. But that is not expected because vote counting is continuing tomorrow in the battlegrounds. But Biden may speak by himself this evening inside. And meantime, no public appearances from President Trump today, but he did tweet, Joe Biden should not wrongfully claim the office of the president. I could make that claim also. Legal proceedings are just now beginning. Joining us now to go over the race is political analyst Dr. Stephen Goggin. Thank you, Dr. Goggin, for joining us tonight. It appears that me. battleground states will be counting these votes or recounting or concluding lawsuits for days and weeks ahead, although Joe Biden is narrowing the path for the president. So give us the message that should come from each man in the meantime. Right. So it's a really interesting question is, you know, Joe Biden likely wanted to give somewhat of a victory speech tonight and probably still will speak but in a much more limited sense, just kind of saying similar things that he said yesterday, kind of, you know, noting that he hasn't yet won, but that he expects to, um, and kind of laying out his vision, right, for the transition and for America. Um, and after the press conference that President Trump held yesterday, you know, many advisors in his camp are probably advising him not to speak out kind of as much, um, but he may issue a message, uh, right? He hasn't announced anything kind of formal tonight or tomorrow. Um, but it really depends on kind of when the major media networks officially call this race, because ballots will continue to be counted for days and weeks, um, but they may not be consequential in the overall outcome. And Dr. Goggin, it was a pretty crazy election day. What of your expertise is in survey methodology. So in your opinion, what is going on with polling? I think we all assume the stakes of 2016 were in the past, but clearly that's not the case. Right. So polling or polls always miss a little bit, but typically in both directions and a little bit random. Right. And in 2016, in a few places, they missed pretty systematically and particularly in the Midwest. And pollsters have used a number of methods to try to correct for these errors. 
Uh, but on Tuesday night, we saw right states in the vast majority of states miss by quite a bit. And in many places, right, they've slowly gotten more in line as more ballots have been counted because of the massive mail-in voting. And the polls are getting you know more correct. But there still are systematic misses in many places. And, you know, you can't really judge what went wrong until all the votes are in and see you see how bad the problem was. Uh, but many methodologists are floating a number of ideas, and it's going to be an area of a lot of research in the coming years to try to fix this problem that many people, right, as response rates have declined, won't speak to. And if you're systematically missing certain types of voters or you're modeling turnout wrong, it can be incredibly problematic. Yeah, Dr. Goggin, thank you for your time. Uh, the, the horribly uh, missed polls is something that certainly they will be looking into in the future. We appreciate your time this evening. All right, moving, of course, on thank to, you. moving on tonight, we have new information on a dramatic story this evening. A helicopter from San Diego transporting a heart landed on its side in Los Angeles this afternoon. It made a hard landing on the helipad at the Keck Hospital of USC. We tracked the tail number to a flight from Gillespie Field. The hospital says three people were on board at the time, but only the pilot suffered minor injuries. The heart was recovered. Moments later, a doctor tripped on debris carrying an object. We're not sure right now if that was the heart or not. Hospital administrators do say the heart was transplanted into a patient within two hours of the crash. We are expecting to see drastic changes in our weather in the coming hours. A major storm is set to arrive this weekend. As ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala shows us, that could be disastrous for people who live or work near where the Valley Fire burned. We're in Hamul near one of the areas that burned during the Valley Fire. And people here have been preparing for the possibility of mudslides and flooding near those burn scars as this rain moves through. We are concerned because the vegetation that normally slows down the water is gone. Tony Skidmore is getting ready for the first significant storm of the season to arrive. We can't stop the water, but what we can do is try to slow it down and divert it around the things we want to protect. His wife Cheryl is the owner of Hidden Haven Farms. The property sits on the outskirts of Hamul, and he worries the rain coming through could cause some damage. Like thousands of acres nearby, the Valley Fire tore through here in September, scorching almost everything in its path. We had a lot of chickens. We were a big egg producer, but with the recent fire, we're, we're kind of rebuilding now. All those were pretty much destroyed. Cal Fire is urging everyone in a similar situation to prepare as the rain likely will not get absorbed into these charred hillsides. Anybody in the recently burned areas, especially near the Valley Fire, are prepared for any kind of mud flows or debris flows that everybody has sandbags and has uh, the area around their home prepped um, so that everything's looking OK. And that's exactly what Skidmore is doing, making check dams and using a combination of sandbags and fiber rolls to slow down and divert the water's path. It's like a, a straw that's bound up with plastic and you can lay this out and then stake it into the ground, but just try to minimize any damage to buildings. He'll be watching carefully to make sure the horses and other animals are safe and is thankful for the help he's received along the way. A lot of credit to the County of San Diego Public Works Department. They're very supportive in providing uh, supplies for us and also some advice. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. So let's check in now with weathercaster Jennifer De La Cruz for a look at the conditions coming into our county, Jen. Hey, Kimberly, already feels chilly out there, breezy, and we do have some showers on the way. We're starting to see a little pockets, a drizzle in North County, overall mostly dry through San Diego, but that rain certainly is on the way. As we go hour through hour through the evening, we're going to see that rain chance increasing through the early morning hours tomorrow. So significant improvement with our rain chances as we get to about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning and then even more so by 10 a.m. So here's our pinpoint Doppler live right now. Mostly dry, however, we are starting to see portions of rain pushing through uh, parts of Camp Pendleton, Oceanside, down to Encinitas, and into the San Diego coastline. So starting in North County, but this is just the beginning of it. We're not going to see any heavy rain overnight. Overall, just some sprinkles. It's not until tomorrow that we'll get some more rainfall. 24-hour temperature change, drastically different from where we were at this time yesterday. Not a huge difference on the coast, but with the cloud coverage and the breeze pushing through, it certainly does feel much cooler. A bigger difference. Uh, temperature change for places like Escondido and Poway. I'm tracking how much rain and possibly snow we're going to get coming up in your seven day forecast. All right, we'll check back in with you. Thank you, Jen.